Well, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But here's the good news. It's not lost forever because God is in the business of divine recovery. Sought after speaker, senior pastor of Vision Church along with her husband, Tom, and prophetic voice, Jane Hammond has served in ministry for over 40 years. Over those years, she's witnessed countless people enduring spiritual attacks without even realizing that the enemy is robbing them of God's promises. In her book, Confronting the Thief, Jane shares strategies to help you discern the tactics of the adversary, how to fight back, and how to recover everything that's been stolen. Well, Jane Hammond is with us now, and welcome back. We were talking right before, and uh, it's been since 2019. Yeah. It's been that yeah, long. Yeah, it's so great to be back with you, though. All yeah. right. It's awesome to have you. I was, I was reading through your book, and, and typically when I'm, I'm reading Jane's books, I've got to have, like, my Bible with me. <laughs> I've got to have a concordance, and it's like I've become the Berean church. I've got to, you know, <laughs> I'm constantly going, about, okay, where's this? So let's get into it. Conf okay. Confronting the thief, taking back what the enemy stole. Um, uh, you, you really go into depth on the, on the story of Haman. I do. Wh why? Yeah. First, I just want to clarify that his name is Haman, not Hammond, so that people will stop okay, casting out the spirit of Haman. Okay. I'm glad I pronounced yes, it right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, the, the whole story of the book of Esther really, I believe, is a picture of what God is doing in the modern day church and um, how mm. the modern day church is called to rise up and confront the enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The story of what Haman did in writing a decree of death and destruction against God's people, and then Esther rising up, answering the call, going before God's throne of grace and receiving a scepter of favor to say, ask what you want. And she said, I want the overturning of the decree of the enemy. And I think that that's really a picture of the church and how we need to be positioned today to intercede on behalf of our people, our families, as well as, I believe, nations. Well, one of the things you pointed out that I, I frankly hadn't ever picked up on is, is his, he had 10 sons. Yes. What happened to him? So, you know, when I was, it was about two years ago, I was sound asleep one night and I woke up at three o'clock in the morning to hear the voice of the Lord say to me, it is time now for the hanging of Haman's 10 sons. And I had read the book of Esther a hundred times and I was like, what? <laughs> so I went and found that in fact, all 10 sons names are listed and each of the 10 sons names actually represents something that I believe we are contending with today and are trying to rob from us places of victory. For example, a, a spirit of distraction that causes apathy, complacency, um, and spiritual slumber in the modern day church, um, a spirit of of religion that comes to rob us uh, from having an authentic, passionate relationship with Jesus, um, a spirit that comes to rob our finances, um, one that comes to try to rob our purity. And I think that mm. each one of the names has a very specific meaning of things that we're called to contend with today. Uh, I, I had never read that before. I, I've got to get, and it really opened my eyes that yes, indeed, we are in a, an incredible spiritual battle. Because sometimes you can get dis distracted away from what, what's the true source of it. The rabbis teach that in every generation, a Haman comes. Yeah. Uh, and for them, it's to destroy the, the Jewish people. But we're grafted into that That's now. That's right. That's and right. so he's, he's after us too. That's right. What, what's the most effective thing we can do to, to stand against it? Well, I think, number one, I think we have to be aware that the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. I had a, I had a vision years ago where I saw a boxing ring, Gordon, and inside the boxing ring were two demonic spirits, the devourer and the destroyer. And they were dancing around and kind of mocking the crowd, looking for an opponent. And as I looked at the people in the crowd, nobody was moving. Nobody mm. was like engaging in this battle. And I knew these people, they, they were warriors. They were, they were people that wouldn't let the devil get away with that. And I couldn't understand why they weren't fighting. And so I look back at the ring and, and I, you know how a boxer comes out, they, uh, boxing is not my sport, but they come out and they've got like a, a robe on their back yeah. that usually says their name, mm -hmm. except instead of their name were written these words, this is just life. And I thought, how many times has the enemy come to steal 
to kill, to destroy, and we just say, well, this is just life. This is just what happens financially in a bad economy. This is just what happens when you get older, your body breaks down. This is just what happens when you send your kids off to school. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, no, it's not just life. There's a devourer and a destroyer, and the people need to start seeing them for who they are and start rising up and taking back what he has stolen. I've, I've heard that phrase from Christians. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. I've, I, I've even heard, um, well, this is just in my family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I'm just repeating patterns uh, from before. And, and I, I don't have the ability to overcome it. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say to that? Well, I think that the, the core of this book really addresses the helplessness, hopelessness, and defeatist mentality of so many in the church. When Jesus said, yes, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. That phrase more abundantly in Greek is a word that means super abundant in quantity, mm. superior in quality, exceedingly above and beyond. That's what Jesus said he came to bring us. It's not just about finances. It's about joy. It's about health. It's about vision. It's about fulfilling your divine purpose in the Lord. And the enemy will use every opportunity to try to rob those things from us. But God is saying to us, we've got to rise up in the authority that Jesus has given to us and start taking back the quantity of our blessings and the quality of our life. I've read a lot of biographies. I really want to know why. What was the, the change point for people? And one of the signatures has always been when something absolutely horrible happens, what they do is the very next morning they get back up and go back at it. And I, the story of William Carey, here he is, the translator of the Bible into so many languages of India, Bengali. He was the first one to, to ever do that. He had a printing press. All of his records were in this one building. It caught fire. Mm. And it burned mm. down. 20 years of work went up. Mm. And as the fire's burning, he turns to his assistant and says, tomorrow we're going to go over here and we're going to start again. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and it's, it, it, what gives us that perseverance that I'm not going to give up. This isn't the way life is supposed to be. I'm supposed right. to be victorious. You know, I think that if we really look at the message of the gospel, it is what the good news is about, is that there's always opportunity for turnaround. There's always opportunity to step into the victory that Jesus has given to us. And that there's so many promises in the word that when we face difficult things, that God knows how to turn the curse to a blessing for us. And God loves to take the things the enemy means against us for evil and turn it around for our good. And I believe that even in what we're seeing in the earth today, what we're seeing in Israel today, which I know is a big part of your heart and passion, God gives us a beautiful story about how you can actually overcome the Haman of your generation. And he gives us a picture of victory uh, and, a, and a, picture, a picture of the enemy's ultimate defeat. And so when we understand that that really is the message of the Word of God, we should never be helpless, we should never be hopeless, and we should never be defeated because Jesus has given us an ability to fight back against whatever the enemy has brought against us. You talked about pictures uh, as I was reading the book, Confronting the Thief. I, I, as I get the picture. This is what Peter meant when he said the restoration of all things. That's right. That that is the purpose of the Messiah. That's the purpose that Jesus came. That's The absolutely. restoration of all things. That's right. And I think that we as believers have to understand that from the very beginning of Israel coming out of Egyptian bondage, they fought with the Amalekites. Haman was an Amalekite. You know, Agag was the king of the Amalekites, and it said he was an Agagite. So every single place throughout the Old Testament where Israel encountered the Amalekites, which they're, you know, they mean plunderers. Mm -hmm. every they're place, the robbers. They're the, the robbers. East, yeah. yeah, they're the robbers. They're the plunderers. And every single place that they encountered them, God gave them, gave them keys to victory. And so I think that as we read the Word of God, as we see the stories, as we understand the significance of every single one of those battles, we're able to glean keys that give us victory today in whatever it is that we may be battling. I've got to ask you, what, what do you see for America coming up in the, I'm not asking for predictions, but I am no, asking, yeah. what, what do you see in, the, in terms of 
America where we are right now? What, what's the path forward for us to be restored? You know, I feel like DeLord said, said three things to me mm. in 2020 that I think we're living in right now. Number one, he said, you need to prepare the people that we're coming into a time of increased chaos. Mm. Yay. <laughs> I Thanks. think it's true. I think it's true since yeah. 2020. But then I, and I kind of said to the Lord, oh, Lord, that's not a very encouraging word. He said, but number two, I'm going to use chaos to expose corruption mm -hmm. and to uncover secret backroom deals and expose hidden agendas. And I think if we're paying attention, that's actually happening right now. Yeah. And the third thing that but said, I think a lot of people are adopting that. Well, that's just the way it is. No, it's true. It's true. That's why I really believe that and the third so part instead is, of fighting against it. They're, they just accept it. Right. right. The third thing that the Lord said to me that day was he said, then tell the people of God, the God of peace is rising. Mm -hmm. The God of peace is rising. The God of peace is rising. He said it three times. And of course, that comes from Romans 16, 20, which says that the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. And what's interesting is that that word shalom, the peace is in, in Greek, it's a different word, but in the Old Testament, the word shalom, when Hebrew scholars look at that word, they don't just look at the definition. They look at each of the Hebrew letters that are, that are used to spell the word shalom. And so they say that when they look at the word picture behind the letters, the deeper meaning of the word peace is peace comes when you destroy the authority of chaos. So oh. I believe that we're in a season that is probably going to be increasingly chaotic over the next several months. And I think that no matter who wins the presidency, I think we're still dealing with chaos. But when you see in the scripture that God has never been afraid to use chaos to turn things around, I think it gives us a lot of hope for what God can do for America. Yeah, and we shouldn't be surprised. I mean, his promises, yet once more, I will shake the nations. Absolutely. So that would include us. That definitely Now the issue us. is, you know, are we going to be shaking, shaken in the shaking? Mm -hmm. or are we going to stand firm? Yeah. Uh, we're out of time. We can talk a long time and, <laughs> and we'll probably will later today. But if you want a deep dive, I encourage it. This book is called confronting the thief it's by jane it's available nationwide and again make sure you got your bible with you make sure you've got a really good concordance it would really help you if you had a good greek and, and um, hebrew dictionary but it's worth the effort so jane thank you for the book Thanks thank so you much. you're such a blessing to the body of christ Thanks i really so appreciate great it to, great to be with you today